Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another One Kit 10 Cards video. Today I'm featuring the March Card Kit by Simon's Stamp. And as always, let's take a look at what's included. So you will get two action wobbles, a craft tacky glue, your lollipop as always, a mix of gems in various sizes and the colors are just lovely deep uh, blues and deep greens. Then you do get a full pack of ephemera. These are by Tim Holtz from his ideology collection and these are acetate actually. They are semi-transparent. They are shiny. Let me take out some of them so you can see how they are. And I will work with almost all of this package so I will show you lots of ideas in today's video. Now, as always, you do get pattern paper. This is a 6x6 pattern paper and I'm going to browse through it so that you can see how super busy it is. Now, I know that this is not one of those uh, easy to use pattern papers, but I'm going to show you lots of ideas. I'm making 10 cards today, so I will share tons of uh, uh, ways on how you can use busy pattern paper as well as the assets by Tim Holtz. Then you do get a 3D embossing folder and again it's one of those uh, designs that can be used on pretty much any card, a really versatile design with lovely circles and dots. And let's move on to the stamp set. It is all about butterflies. You do get three different butterflies and you can stamp differently the wings to put them together. Uh, you will find the body of the butterfly, lots of sentiments, flowers and leaves. And there is also a matching die set included in the key that cuts out one of the butterflies. So it's the top one. And also the hearts, the um, different shapes like uh, the flowers and even the body of the butterfly. Then you do get one of those plastic pouches and then cardstock, just like always, this uh, golden one, the green, the white. And there is a blue one that you cannot see here, but it is included. So I started with the ivory cardstock that was included in the kit. I cut it in half and then I ended up with four panels that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Then from the acetate pack, I'm going to pick up all the big panels. You will see that there are four of them in the pack. So I'm going to make four cards at once using the exact same uh, design idea. So first of all I placed all the panels on top of my card bases and then I am going to pick some of those um, uh, little snippets. They look like um, teared uh, paper from a botanical uh, encyclopedia or something. Again keep in mind these are all acetate but I like that uh, they are uh, ivory and um, black. So I am going to create a cluster in different areas of my uh, card. I am going to choose four of them, one for each card, and then on top of them, I'm going to layer those other tickets with the numbers. Two of them for each of the cards. This way you are using lots of uh, what is included and nothing goes to waste. Just use what you have, have fun with um, creating your cards and don't hoard uh, the um, ingredients of the kit. After all, the next month you will get even more supplies to play with. So as you can see, I'm just laying them on top and I left this bit of video uh, without speeding up uh, the process at all so that you can see how my mind works and what I'm trying to create there. Now, when I'm designing cards, it is kind of difficult for me to go completely flat. As I'm placing everything down now, you can see everything is flat. However, I'm thinking that I will add some dimension with my sentiments. Now, I'm going to bring in the stamp set that was included in the kit. And there are many sentiments that you can play with. I'm going with two of them, which I'm going to stamp on a black cardstock by using a embossing ink. And then I'm going to apply on top white embossing powder. Since I have four cards, I'm going to create four sentiments so that I have one for each one of my cards. I'm going to heat set that. I will use thin strips of um, dies to cut them out or you can use your paper trimmer and I have everything ready to put together now. 
One thing that you need to keep in mind as you put together all those elements is that they are semi-transparent. So if you add uh, a glue or any type of adhesive at the back, it's going to show. You have to strategically place it on darker areas or very busy areas where the design at front is super busy. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways. Here I'm using my tape runner at the darker areas of the flower. If you apply in different areas, it's going to stay put. Don't worry too much about adding glue all over the bag. Trust me, they don't want to escape your card. Now, here is another way that uh, you can use. I'm just using glue dots, again, strategically placing them at the back where they are not going to show at all. And I'm just laying one on top of the other, all my ephemeras. Now, up to now, I don't have dimension. The only dimension that I have is by layering all these uh, um, ephemeras one on top of the other. However, I do have some dimension at the back of my sentiment where I used a thin strip of foam tape at the back and my card is ready. I'm going to repeat the same process to put together the rest of the cards and with the magic of video editing, here are all of them together. Super easy to create and really fun and uh, depending on the sentiment that you choose to uh, place on top, they can be used for pretty much any occasion. Here are some close-up photos on these four cards. And while you are taking a look at them, uh, don't forget that uh, just like always, I will link down below in the description everything I'm using. Of course, these are all part of one card kit, but you can get separately if you like some of the supplies. You will find all the links that you need down below in the description. So now let's move on and try to use up what's left from the pack of the acetate uh, ephemeras. Now I like the two birds and these are going to be the focal point for my next two cards and again I'm going to follow the same design principles and create two cards at the same time. And what I'm doing here is creating groups of ephemeras that I can use for each one of my two cards. So for the blue bird, I'm going to use the blue ephemeras, while for the other bird that has some red on his neck, I'm going to use the red ones. And uh, I'm just going to try and lay one on top of the other, just creating a cluster that looks pleasing to the eye. No need to overthink about it, just layering is um, the technique here. Just place one on top of the other. And I will start with the bigger ones at the back and as I go towards the top, I'm uh, using the smaller ephemeras, of course placing the focal point, which in this case is the bird, on top. So I have my clusters ready. And I'm going to bring the super busy pattern papers and try to match one of those pattern papers for which one of the birds. So I think that I went with a bluish background for the blue bird and then a green one for the other bird. Now there are two sides on each pattern paper. One of them is super super busy with lots of designs. The other one gives you just more of an abstract uh, look of colors. So I'm going with the B side for these designs and I'm going to cut these papers to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So these are going to be my card bases. I'm just going to stick those panels on top of a white pre-folded card base. Then I used one of my rectangle dies to cut out two panels that uh, these panels are white. This is really important for the composition because I need to have some contrast. If I stick that cluster of uh, um, acetates on top of that super busy pattern paper, you won't be able to see anything. But if I build that on top of a little white panel, then everything is going to come together somehow. So now I'm building the blue card and you see that on both of my panels I did splatter uh, a little bit of black. You don't have to do that. That was actually watercolor, black watercolor, but uh, you can leave them plain white if you like. I just feel like it adds something interesting back there and it's not super, super white. Anyway, that's only if you like splatters. Now again, I'm using uh, my uh, glue dots and sticking all the ephemeras one on top of the other and for these cards I'm going to add dimension by using foam tape at the back of these panels as well as at the back of my sentiments. So for the second card I did the same thing, I'm not going to show it to you. Let's move on to the next step. And this is where I'm putting my cards together. For this uh, design, I decided to add the panel slightly crooked 
just to make it look more interesting, but you can definitely align it straight if you like. So just like that, I have six cards with no effort at all. And uh, all I have to do is to stick all those panels that I created on top of white pre-folded cards. Now, of course, I need to add sentiments. You can use any sentiment that you like. You can do what I did for the previous four cards with the sentiments from the um, stamp set that is included in the kit. However, I am a little bit lazy here, so I'm using pre-made, uh, pre-printed sentiments. These are by Waffle Flower. And uh, again, I'm following the same design, white on top of black. Now, as I promised in the beginning, for the rest of the cards, I'm going to show you what you can do with this super busy pattern paper and how you can work with it. So don't forget that there are dies that cut out the butterfly in the kit. That's what I'm separating here. And then I'm going to bring in one of the pattern papers and cut out the panel. Now the standard card is four and a quarter by five and a half. This is a quarter of an inch smaller. So that's uh, four by five and uh, one quarter. Now I'm going to place the butterfly, the top of uh, wings of the butterflies on top. You can cut them out uh, at the same time if you like, but uh, I want to kind of um, not have a um, divider in between those wings. I hope you understand what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to run it through, cut out the top uh, part of the wings, then run it once more for the bottom part. And this is where my repositionable tape disappointed me. I'm trying to separate it, but I want to use that wing on another card. However, I do have a boo-boo. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to keep it and I will show you how we can save that for the next card. Then I will place the bottom part. And I'm connecting those dies. So the butterfly that comes out is going to be connected without having a divider there. So here is the bottom part cut out. I'm being very careful again with my tape. I had no issues here. And then I will place the body of the butterfly on top because I want the antennas. You can definitely omit this tape if you like. You don't need to have antennas on this cutout element. Now, uh, if you understand by now, I'm going for a shaker card. So once I have my negative butterfly ready, I'm going to turn it around, use some uh, double-sided tape all over, and then stick the acid on top. Now this is just pattern paper and it's quite flimsy. This is the thinner pattern paper that you get. So by using acetate at the back it's going to make it sturdier which means that this panel is going to stay nice and sturdy on top of the foam tape that we are going to use later on. And I have here a white pre-folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. You can add any confetti that you like. I went with this one because it doesn't add too much color. I already have um, a busy background. I'm going to place that on top. And again, use any sentiment that you have at hand. Stamp sentiments from the same stamp set that is included. I'm using again, I'm going the lazy way. I'm using again the ready-made ones. These are by Simon Says Stamp. And here is a photo of the finished card. Keep in mind, you can repeat the same design with any of the pattern papers that you have at hand or any other busy pattern paper that you might have in your stash. Now let's use the leftovers, the actual wings of the butterfly and make another card. So a two out of one die cut. Now there is a die that cuts out the body of the butterfly. I did cut that out from black cardstock and I'm going to stick it on top of the wings. But I didn't like it at the same at this uh, stage. I thought that it was uh, too bulky. And um, there is a stamp included th for the body. So I'm going to create a second one where I'm going to white emboss the detail of the body. And then stick it on top of the butterfly so that it gives more definition. Keep in mind you can definitely do the same uh, technique with the wings. If you want to have some detail on top of the wings, on top of this pattern paper, use the matching stamps. So here I am putting my card together. I'm going to place the butterfly by using foam tape at the back for extra dimension. And uh, I'm going to fluff up the wings. I decided instead of uh, sticking the butterfly straight on top, aligned perfectly, uh, to give it some movement. And uh, then just add the sentiment. Again, it's a butterfly card. Use whatever uh, sentiment you like. 
Of course, I haven't forgot of that uh, little booboo up there on the wing. For this one, I'm going to use the gems that were included in the kit to cover up the butterfly. You can use those to give it some sparkle and shine. And again, you can repeat this design with any of the pattern papers. Now I'm going to move on and show you two ways on how you can use the pattern paper on the A side, where you will find a more defined pattern and design. So here is one with lots of birds. I'm going to cut out a panel that's smaller than my standard card. I'm not going to give you dimensions. It depends on the pattern paper. Just make sure that you don't cut out any of those um, birds. I don't want to have a cut out bird. So here I'm just eyeballing everything. And I like that I have three full bears, the blue ones, and another one is standing on the branch. Now you want to give some definition and frame on a very busy background paper. That's why I went with uh, making this panel slightly smaller than my white card. This way I end up having a border that gives it a lovely finish. And then for the sentiment, I'm going to stamp a couple of sentiments from the stamp set on top of a white circle that I tie cut. I'm going to combine hello with one of the other sentiments that fits inside that circle. And you can stick that circle as it is on top of your card or if you want to make it uh, more interesting I just chopped off the bottom a little bit from the bottom and then I used the golden cardstock that was included in the kit to cut out a very thin strip of paper and I embellished the bottom of my sentiment. I'm using foam tape at the back of this uh, sentiment and I'm going to place it on top and this is one of those designs that lets the pattern paper be the focal point, it does all the hard work for you. If you have beautiful pattern papers that are super busy, just cut out a sentiment in a circle and th then stick it on top. Now there was also a heart included in the die set in the kit that I cut out again from that golden cardstock from the kit and it really is a gorgeous design. Very busy, but if you are able to combine it with white, then it really stands out. And I'm showing you here another design that works great with busy pattern papers. And again, I'm working with the A side with all those birds. I just cut out a circle, a window panel, and I'm placing it on top of those um, busy pattern papers to decide what I want to emphasize it, as if you are looking into a scene. So I decided to go with this beautiful bird and uh, the lovely flowers. Just cut out the piece that you like and stick it at the back of your window. And then you see here I have a fuzzy cut, a little flower again from the same pattern paper, three leaves again from the same pattern paper, and I do have a sentiment. So I'm just going to combine all three together. I'm just trying to audition, decide how everything is going to look. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to stick everything down. And I did embellish the design by adding a few of those gems that were included in the kit. Absolutely stunning card, and you can see here the close-up photos, probably my favorite from all of them. So here are all the 10 cards together that I created today. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired, uh, that I gave you some ideas on how to use busy pattern papers as well as the acetate ephemeras. At the end of the video, I'm going to add photos of all the 10 cards that I made for today. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to like, and thank you all so much for watching.